Uh, so, to my right uh, is Henry Rollins, who I think you uh, probably know who he is. <laughs> And I've known Frank for 40 years as well. She likes to be referred to as the average Jewish lesbian folk singer, Drew. Adiola Sands is a singer, songwriter, born and raised in Los Angeles. She's the front woman of the hardcore band Trap Girl. Rudy Blue, <laughs> um, first generation LA born and raised Chicanx queer. Uh, he is a mover, shaker, organizer, curator, zine magazine, maker, uh, booker, DJ, promoter, drug dealer. No, that's not right. Um, <laughs> and you guys work together, Hex Ray Sanchez. He is co-creator and producer of Club Scum, a zine uh, maker, and an active uh, band member in the L.A. queer punk scene. How do you spot a real punk rocker? My version of punk is like DIY and people are creating shit and moving things around in the city and like, I don't know, impacting people and questioning things and being in bands, zines, um, producers, creating space. I don't think it's a look. Good, thank God. It's not a look, because everybody's got that look now. you can see it in down. their eyes. Sorry, Frank? But you can see it in the eyes. Uh-huh, it's in the eyes, I love that. She can tell, see, she's got, got a little bit of an instinct going on. Henry? Uh, to me, it's, it's someone who's not hyper aware that they're wearing this clothing or doing a certain thing. Mm -hmm. They just fell into the clothes, fell into the music because they were naturally drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And they're not putting on a thing, it's just who they are. And the clothes and the hair is just a manifestation of how they deal with life, authority, love. Aggravation. It's and, a philosophy, really. And it's a way. A way and, of life. Uh, you'll see punk rock in people who don't dress it. You'll see it in all kinds of ways, and you know it when you see it. Um, I think, like Rudy's answer to, you know, what you're doing, what are you shaking up, what are you pissed about, what are you angry about, what do you want to see change, you know, it's very important. You have to be angry. I, I saw an interview with Henry lately, because I watch him all the time. Um, <laughs> And he said he was angry. Are you still angry, Henry? Yeah. <laughs> Watch out. Okay. Why? Well, good anger. I mean, oh. uh, with the things that make me mad, make me do something about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm not like kicking holes in walls. Uh, I'm mad at inequality, homophobia, misogyny, things like that. So it gets me active, mm -hmm. and it makes you know words come, ideas come, things happen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, anger in that way, I think, is very good. But if I could just add to that, I mean, I truly believe that, like, um, as far as, like, you know, spotting out punk rockers, I feel it's, like, people who don't really identify with, like, mainstream culture, and eventually you all find each other, you know, and make noise and, like, make shit happen. So yep. that, to me, that's a punk rock. Yeah. And so back in the day, in the way back day that us three remember, um, what I think everybody was trying to do, really, was to tear down tradition. And tear down tradition that was authorized by the Reagan administration and the mainstream. Are we still trying to do that today with punk? I think anger is a, is a great motivator, you know, and uh, uh, what motivates my anger is people trying to tell me what to do. I think what, com what really uh, brought us all together in punk and still does is the outside oppression and trying to fight for uh, what we believe in and who we are. And taking thing, you know, anger lets me constructively take my creativity, my opinions, my politics, and put it out into the world uh, in a constructive way. How are you guys changing the world down there? Um, I think, you know, everything that I've ever done has been out of anger and frustration and not seeing myself in certain scenes or movements, so then the result has been creating space or creating bands or zines and stuff like that. And for us, it was like we were tired of being these like queer punks from East LA and having to go to Hollywood or having to go to Silver Lake or the West Side for shows or for club nights, and we were like, why don't we just start a queer punk party and in East LA so people don't have to leave the neighborhood, yeah. you know? And, and it was born out of frustration and also like 
having to deal with predominantly white spaces, you know, and we were just like, we want to fuck shit up with brown folks, you know, like, <laughs> or like queer brown folks because we were going to backyard gigs and stuff in East LA and South LA. I mean, yeah, I think, I think uh, like queer, uh, queer anger is like queer power ultimately. So by like, you know, creating spaces and taking up space and even holding space, like it makes all the difference, especially for all the kids and everybody out there who really like doesn't feel like they have somewhere to go or fit in, you know, so. Have you all noticed that there's been a sort of, um, since, since the internet took over the world, a sort of um, homogenization of punk rock and it's kind of become so diverse that it's hard to spot the real thing. And is that frustrating to you at all? Here's what I've seen. I've seen that it's made people able to connect very easily. Mm -hmm. And so shows, I, I don't think shows have ever been better in LA than right now. Mm -hmm. No fighting, mm -hmm. at least the shows I go to. No fighting? No, I don't see fights. I, I see yeah. people really getting along and young people being openly gay without fear of retribution. Like right. a long time ago, you could get you know, a gay oh, you kid get, get beat up. Right, yeah. and I see it now, I don't see that, which is great. And I'm thinking all these subgroups of people all kind of under the umbrella of outsider, I think they're connecting very easily because of their cell phones and the internet. And so it's not necessarily being homogenized, you're just finding that there's a lot of these disparate groups have a lot in common, and they all like that band. And so everyone shows up. Like you go see anything having to do with Kathleen Hanna, like Bikini Killer, the Julie Ruin, and it's a super gay, very young, very happening, mixed audience of people that are super friendly and smart. And so it just shows you that the punks always had it right. Like mm -hmm. our shows are always the best because we all are escaping something else to be together in this place. You're having so much more fun now than me. I have to say, it sounds like you're having a great time. Frank, are you performing? Yes, I'm still out there playing. And I just want to talk about, you know, the punk movement's always been like fueled by the youth movement and uh, being angry and young. And that's still the core of punk rock. I mean, we're old now and we still have the do-it-yourself spirit that we, you know, that is so important uh, in punk rock. It's like not waiting around for somebody else to do it. And when you're young, you really need to have that community that encourages you to pick up an instrument, to make art, to do what you do and not wait around for somebody else to do it for you. Not wait around for somebody to sign you to a record label, not wait around for somebody to give you a lesson on how to play something, but by sharing the tools and, and the feelings um, and the art that you have with each other, that's what builds the community. That's what made punk rock so strong. Yep. And um, you know, there's a lot that has changed, but that I think has really stayed the same. So your name of your club is Scum, and so that's one very punk rock name because you're embracing the fact that you're referred to that way, right? Pretty much, yeah. How'd you come up with that name? We just were throwing names back and forth over text, <laughs> and that one seemed to be the one that stuck. Yeah, it sounded really gross and really punk and really queer, so we're like, why not? <laughs> I have to talk about my experience going to Scum for the first time because... Uh, it took me a while to find it, I got lost, and then I walked into this tiny little space out in Montebello, and the world changed in that magic way, just like it did back in the day when I'd walk into a club, when I'd walk into the mask, or I'd walk into the vax, or I'd walk in, because there was my family, and there were the lights, and there was the video, and there was the music, and everybody was dancing, and there was a community there, and there's the best art at SCUM, and they always have live performances, and video, and great DJs, and go-go boys, and go-go girls, and it, it's just the great, I just felt like I was home, and it was really, really exciting, and there have been different like bumps in my life where I feel like I've been drawn back to punk rock, and I've been reinvigorated. Once was when I saw Team Dresch play, and that, and the whole Riot Girl thing just sucked me back in, and I was like, yes, I want to make music again. Yes, this is my world. And the same thing happened when I came into Scum, and I'm really grateful that they've created this space. It's a very, very special place, and it just means that, that punk rock, it means that we're alive. You know, the anger and determination and the creativity means that we're alive. And it's exciting to me.
Yeah, if I could just say though, like I really think that with Scum it's really special because we've been able to um, kind of like incorporate drag culture into punk and you know, for me personally, I think seeing a drag queen perform is like the same kind of energy or like essence as seeing a punk band play, so. And it's also very punk rock in the sense where like, you know, drag queens are born at Scum. They just like, I've never done drag, but I want to do drag tonight. So it's just like, <laughs> fuck yeah. There's a lot of crazy performance art. And it's really cool for us to be able to like, connect with old school punks like Frank and Alice Bag and Martin from Crudos and have them participate in Scum and, and DJ or perform. And, and for us to bring these people to our neighborhood and like, be like, come hang out with all these freaky ass kids, you know? <laughs> Um, so now, Henry, are you making music? No. Um, <laughs> well, just one day many years ago, I woke up and I went, wow, I'm done. Uh, not done with writing or communicating, but just done with the lyric as a form. And I called my manager and he said, can we talk about this? Because he loved his 10% of the action. And I, he said, we'll do a greatest hits tour. I said, people like me don't have hits and I, I don't want to be a human jukebox. So I'm done. And luckily, I, I do a lot of other stuff, so we just filled in the gap where music was. I did music for like 20 some years without doing anything else, kind of just all the time. And one day, the toothpaste was gone. I took the stone from the master's hand and I left the temple. And now, uh, I've never, want, I see bands at the airport all the time with their laminates and their, and I'm like, nope, I don't miss it. Uh, and I'm not putting it down, I'm just, I did it and it spat me out and said, don't return, and I never have. I never put the Decline movies out until I did, because I always felt like if you're a punk and you truly respect the philosophy, that you don't go commercializing it and selling out. So what about selling out? Do you guys, do you young people have a, 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 a is there a selling out factor for you're not young shut up um, no, I'm joking no but um, what do you think about that well when it comes to making a record I mean our band is we're currently making our first full length record and it's like there's so many delays it's far the hardest thing we've done as a band in the five years we've been together the hardest thing and it's because of funding these shitty labels are messaging us cool we're down but they don't have any money so we can't do this great record that you want you know, if you're in fucking, you know, Bullhead, Arizona, and you're... But well, what you about wanna... DIY? Why can't you do it Well, yourself? we're trying. We're trying to work, you know, but you can't really... It's harder to do a record properly, or whatever that means, but I just know that we've been making this record for eight months, and it's... I'm up to here with it, but okay. we're getting there. So, getting yeah, there. you kind of do need that backing sometimes. Sometimes. I know. You know? I know. Do. I made a movie about serial killers, which I would never do today because my agent said, how else are you going to make 50 grand? He was right. So um, what do you whenever we have done things that people might say are sold, selling out, like we did an exhibition for the Pasadena Armory under the condition that they funded workshops for queer youth. That was the only reason we did it. We're like, we'll do it if you guys pay to provide workshops for queer youth. Yeah. I think if you're cr true to your contact... <laughs> If you're true to your content and, have, and keep your integrity, you're not selling out. You know, participating is not selling out. Continuing to do what you do and what you believe in is not selling out. You know, and if you get to make money to continue doing what you do, that's not selling out. That's called working. Right on. Well, I sold out personally. <laughs> that's okay. And I think so, Penelope. Huh? I don't I, think so. I That's did. Okay. I, I disagree. I don't think well, so. Well, no, I did. I'll tell you why I did. And this is off topic, honestly. But when I did Wayne's World, the only movies I would get offered were like the Beverly Hillbillies and the Little Rascals. And so it's like, no. And then so I millions of dollars. Okay, what the fuck, you know? I, <laughs> but do you do you do one show so that you can do another show? I mean, yeah, do you work a crap I, job so that you can do what you want to do? Yeah. Yeah, I, did. I, so I used the money to do the decline part three. There you go. Homeless, homeless punks, you know. And uh, so if you use the money the right way, then I, 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 feel, I feel okay about it, personally. You, know? you, you, you is, didn't sell up at all. I didn't. And even when you get the criticism, you have to um, stand by what you truly believe and, and do the things that are, um, are the right thing to make the world better.